Oftentimes when people hear the word salad, they think super healthy or really boring. So today I'm gonna to share with you my top five tips for making crave-worthy salads. We'll make three delicious and flavorful salads and I'll walk you through the tips as I make each one. So by the end of the video, not only will you have three great salad recipes, but more importantly, you'll understand the principles of making great salads so you too can make a great salad at home. If there's just one thing you take away from this video, it is to make your own salad dressings. Store-bought salad dressings are just not good. They're, they're bad. I think they're just bad. I feel pretty strongly about this. I think it's worth the time to make your own. It can be quick and simple, or you can make it a little fancier. I'll show you a few different options today, and I promise you, your taste buds will thank you for it. The first salad dressing we're gonna make is a citrus date vinaigrette. It is really delicious, possibly my favorite salad dressing. We're gonna start off with two medjool dates putting them in a food processor so they can break down. We're also gonna add some lemon juice. I like to squeeze it over my hands to catch the seeds. There are no seeds in this one though, so that's nice. Now I'm also gonna add a tablespoon of orange juice. This is just freshly squeezed from an orange. We're also gonna add a few tablespoons of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. And normally with a vinaigrette, you would add the olive oil in at the end, but since this is all going in the food processor, it doesn't really matter which order. For a little bit of a sharpness and a kick, we're gonna add some Dijon mustard. We're also adding some spices to this dressing to give it a little extra flavor. We've got coriander. We also got some cumin and some paprika. Some sea salt to flavor the salad dressing. Black pepper. I'm gonna let this blend up and while the motor's running, I'll drizzle in a little bit of water to help bring it all together. It looks really good. For our next salad dressing, we're gonna be making a simple tahini dressing. This is one of my favorite easy salad dressings. Just a few ingredients. It takes two minutes and it's naturally creamy thanks to tahini. So we're gonna use two tablespoons of this. To give this dressing a little bit of pop, I'm gonna zest just a little bit of lemon on top and we'll also add the juice of the lemon. About one tablespoon for two tablespoons tahini. Season with a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of maple syrup to balance out the acidity from the lemon juice, just like a quarter teaspoon. I'm just gonna whisk everything to combine and then I'm gonna stream in some ice water. I like to use ice water, I think it makes a little bit fluffier. This tahini dressing will stay good in the fridge for several days so you can make a big batch and have salad throughout the week. Our final salad dressing is a lemon garlic vinaigrette. It's simple, but a little bit fancier than your standard lemon vinaigrette. We're gonna start by zesting one small lemon. I'm a big fan of adding citrus zest to your salad dressings. It just adds freshness and vibrancy, and it's so delicious. Now we're gonna add two tablespoons of lemon juice from the same lemon. Add a little bit more. I like to add just a splash of sweetness to some of my salad dressings to balance out the acidity in vinaigrettes. We're also gonna add some Dijon mustard for a little bit of a tang. And since this is a lemon garlic vinaigrette, we're gonna add some garlic. I've got one clove and I'm going to use the garlic crusher. Is this a garlic crusher? Is it press, a garlic press? Because I don't want any pieces of garlic, so I want it chopped up really, really finely. Season with some salt and pepper. And then we're just gonna give it a shake before adding the olive oil. This is a very nifty salad dressing bottle jar. If you're interested, I'll link it in the description box below. And now we're gonna add three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. And give it another shake. And the shaking is gonna help emulsify this, so it's really creamy and not separated. All right, let's give it a taste. Oh, it's so good. It's really well balanced. A little sweet, tart, tangy, sharp, garlicky. So I'm gonna put the salad dressings aside and we'll start assembling the salads. When it comes to the base of your salad, think outside the box. Your salad doesn't just have to be a baby spinach salad. There are so many other options. For our first salad, we're gonna do a mix of greens and grains. So we're gonna use arugula as our salad green. Oops, I'm gonna put it in the bowl first. We're gonna use arugula as our salad greens. Salad greens. And we're also gonna add some grains. And I've got farro here today, but you could use any grain you like. Adding grains to your salad is gonna give you more textural variety, but it's also gonna help you stay full, so it's a great idea. For our next salad, we're not even gonna use salad greens. To begin with, we're thinking really far outside the box. There is no box, the box 
has disappeared, we are actually going to use chilled asparagus and green beans as our base. And this is gonna be a chilled vegetable salad. I've got asparagus and green beans today because asparagus is in season, but you could use other kinds of vegetables as well. To blanch these vegetables, bring an inch or two of salted water to a boil, add the green beans, cover the pot and cook them for two minutes. Then add the asparagus and cook for one to three more minutes, depending on how skinny they are. Then transfer them immediately to an ice bath to stop them from cooking and dry them out on a clean towel. Once they're dried, go ahead and slice the asparagus and green beans into two inch pieces on an angle. And if you wanna get even more creative, other greenless salads include lentil salads or bean salads or grain salads, or you could even do an herb only salad with fresh cilantro and parsley and dill and basil and mint, and those can be the base of your salad. For salad number three, we're gonna use two different types of salad greens. I like to do this for textural and taste variety. Today I've got some romaine, and I'm also going to add some kale. Adding the romaine, it's gonna add this nice crusty, crusty, crisp and crunch, crisp and crunch texture to it that is really nice in salads, it makes it refreshing. And when you combine it with the kale, you're gonna get this nice textural play and it's gonna make you more likely to eat more kale, which is always a good thing. To add extra flavor to the salad greens, I'm going to lightly salt and pepper the greens directly before I add any of the other ingredients. This adds extra flavor to your salad and it's something that I don't think most people do, but you do notice a difference. And when I'm making a salad that's just salad greens, I like to dress the salad greens before I add any of the other ingredients. That ensures that all of the salad greens, every piece of romaine, every piece of kale is well coated. And I like to pour the salad dressing around the bowl and then toss to combine. That's so good. I'll just eat this on its own. Tip number three is to add a variety of textures to your salads. I think the texture of a food is almost as important as the flavor of the food, and you know I take flavor very seriously, so you wanna be adding layers of varying textures to your salads, which is gonna make them a lot more interesting to eat. I tend to think that there are four main categories of textures, crunchy, crisp, creamy, and chewy. And in this video and the recipes, I'll share specific examples of those textures, but in the free PDF guide, you'll find lots of different examples of these textures so you can customize your own salads. In the first salad where we have the arugula and farro, we already have something chewy because farro has this really lovely chewy bite. And we're also gonna add some fennel. It's been thinly sliced and it has this lovely anise licorice taste, and it's gonna add this nice crisp freshness. If you have a mandolin, that would be great to thinly slice this, but I don't have one, so just a sharp knife is fine. And these are the fennel fronds that come on the top of the fennel. They're also really lovely, so I like to reserve them and add a little bit later. We're also gonna add some toasted walnuts, which go really well with the arugula and the farro and the fennel, and they're gonna add a nice crunchy texture. And our final texture we're gonna add is some avocado, which of course is gonna add this really luxurious creaminess. For our green beans and asparagus salad, I'm gonna add two different ingredients right now. First, hemp seeds, which are gonna add a delightful nuttiness and a little bit of a crunch. And we'll add some more distinct crunchiness later. I'm also adding some chickpeas. I don't really know what the texture of chickpeas is, maybe chewy, but I really love them. They're a great source of protein, so we're gonna add some chickpeas. Oh. I'm really good at this, I promise. Ready? Salad number three, we already have some of that crisp coolness from the romaine lettuce. We're gonna add a little bit of additional crisp coolness with some sliced cucumbers. And of course we have kale in there too, which is a different texture than the romaine, so that's just gonna add a little bit of interest. For something crunchy, I'm gonna add some toasted pumpkin seeds. For something chewy and delightfully sweet, we're gonna add some dried cranberries. Could also do dried apricots or cherries. And finally, we're gonna add some lentils. Again, I'm not really sure what the texture of lentils are, but they're good for you, they're packed with protein, and they're gonna be a nice, hearty addition to the salad. One of the reasons people find salads a bit boring is that they're often made with just raw vegetables. I get it, raw vegetables are good for you, but they can be a little bland. So we can also add marinated vegetables, roasted vegetables, grilled vegetables, pickled vegetables. There's a whole universe of different types of veggies we can add to our salads. For salad number one, I'm gonna add some roasted beets to this. We already have raw fennel in it and fennel and beets together are such a classic combination, especially with those walnuts and the citrus date vinaigrette they'll also add. 
For our green bean and asparagus salad, we already have the blanched vegetables, so now we're gonna vary it by adding some raw vegetables. We've got some sliced cherry tomatoes for a little juicy bite. And we're also gonna add some thinly sliced shallots that are raw. The green beans and asparagus are really mild on their own, so the raw shallot is gonna add this really nice punch. And for our third salad, we already have raw salad greens and raw cucumber. Now we're gonna add some pickled vegetables. We're just gonna use some store-bought sauerkraut or pickled cabbage, but something like pickled carrots would also be really nice in this salad. Now that we've talked about texture in salads, let's talk about flavor. There are so many different ways you can boost the flavors in your salad so that you actually start to crave them. One of my favorite ways to do this is by adding fresh herbs. It adds this herbaceous brightness. It's kind of hard to describe in words, but I highly recommend it. So for this first salad with the beets and the fennel, we're gonna add some fresh parsley as well as some fresh dill that I finely chopped. It goes really well with all these flavors. And we're gonna do the same thing with our second salad, the green bean asparagus salad. I'm also adding some freshly chopped parsley, some freshly chopped dill, and one extra ingredient, we've got some slivered basil. I'm also adding some toasted almonds to this green bean salad. And this is another flavor building technique. If you're using nuts or seeds in your salad, make sure you toast them beforehand. It can be in a skillet or in the oven. And this really releases the volatile oils in the nuts and seeds. It makes them so much more flavorful, releases certain flavors that you don't get to taste when they're not toasted. So I highly recommend doing this. Another technique that we're using to build flavor here is using seasonal ingredients. So asparagus is in season right now, so it's at its best. By just buying what's in season and using that in your salad, you're gonna add more flavor. For our final salad, we're not gonna add anything right now, but I just wanna point out that we added some dried fruit, which adds a little bit of extra flavor, and we also salted and peppered the greens directly, and that also builds flavor. Now it's time to dress the salads. And when you're making a salad dressing from scratch, you really wanna be thinking about how your salad dressing is going to balance the flavors in your salad. So for this salad, the beet and fennel salad, I'm using the citrus date vinaigrette and beets and walnuts are quite earthy. So the citrus in this is gonna be a nice flavor contrast. And we're using arugula as our greens. And arugula is quite peppery and a little bit bitter and spicy. So the dates, which are sweet, are gonna really nicely balance that as well. For salad number two, we've got the chilled vegetables. And so I'm using something creamy. I think it's a nice way to bring all these different flavors and textures together. This is the creamy tahini dressing we made earlier. Super simple, but really flavorful. And salad three, we already addressed this one earlier. It's the lemon garlic vinaigrette. I think kale salads are really good with a little bit of lemon. So we've got lemon zest and juice and the garlic and the maple syrup. It's sharp, but a little bit sweet, it's tangy and tart, and it's really perfectly balanced. All right, those are my five tips for making delicious salads. If you're interested in more flavor-packed recipes, be sure to hit that red subscribe button because I share new videos every week, and I'll see you guys in the next one. No, I'm really good at this, I promise. Oh. Almost. Nailed it. Nailed it. What are the Nailed it. Nailed it. Oftentimes when people hear the word salad, they think super boring or really healthy. It's like super. super boring. Super boring. <laughs> super boring. And when make and when it and I'm when I'm making a salad. Nom 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 nom.